Hey everybody, welcome back to the Final Fantasy VII Let's Play. So let's get back to the topic at hand. Do you think Baron ever wiped his ass with the chainsaw equipped? Uh, well, the atomic scissors. Uh, the atomic scissors. Well, you could at least pick your ass with the atomic scissors. Yeah, no, but, but it's um, also like you could get all the you could if he if he gets tweezers. No, you can get uh, all the, the rocket fist. Though. The rocket fist. There's a glitch oh. here you can actually do in the original versions. I'm not sure if they patched it out later. You can keep talking to Tifa like this repeatedly. And so long as that option comes up, you can actually get yourself free uh, oh, plus one points. Plus one points, so you're pretty yeah. much guaranteed to hang out with Tifa at the Gold Saucer. Yeah, Didn't and I also, I also got out of my way to piss off Aerith, too. Do you remember me, Cloud? Oh, yeah, you were the slum drunk. <laughs> what about now? <laughs> um, Still slum drunk. <laughs> I, I, also, I also just remembered something. What's up? Since we're in the year 2020, it is the 100th anniversary of the word Dingleberry. <laughs> Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, that's a really weird fucking <laughs> well, <laughs> just, just branch off into another tangent. Well, if it's a, if, since we're talking anniversaries, coincide my I did a run through of Resident Evil Four to celebrate my hype for the Resident Evil Three remake coming out. That's right. I bought a horse. <laughs> no, I didn't buy a horse, but I actually managed to complete the game on the days on the game's anniversary. So yeah, yeah that nice timing. I'm surprised you actually went through the tutorial because if you just um, choose to cut it all straight out. Barrel just go, you know, fuck you. I'll learn from yeah. somebody else. It's obviously like, yeah, because at the end of the day, like, after, no matter if you choose to, to do the tutorial, yes, Barrett's always going to say, yeah, you know what? I'll just let you handle it. Yeah, so you know? ultimately, Barrett also, but the reason you do want to go through this is this also, I think, gives you points for Barrett. Yeah, just for the gold saucer date? Yeah. Sure. It's really hard, though, to get Baron. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to the point where it's like, I don't bother. I don't bother. It's like, maybe I'll do it one time. I think there might be a trophy for it. because it's, There uh, is a the, trophy for the it, The PS4 but version does add trophy support for this game. You know, yeah, if, if you, you want to shut through all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Master every materia. Fuck you. No. <laughs> Not just like straight up. No. Do you think a Barrett actually goes on a date, he he tells him, well, welcome to the gun show. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that's his pickup line. And he, only lifts, up his, he only lifts up his right hand. <laughs> And he actually does it. have a real big problem dating, though, because, like, he has, like, the massive guilt for what he did in his avalanche, yeah. which hurts him. Anyway, I decided to show off the Materia tutorial because we, to, for, so that we ourselves can talk about the Materia system. Not so much as, like, how it, how it works, but more like the perks and disadvantages of Materia. Namely, like, basically those stats on the left there you're going to want to pay attention to. The more magic it, it, it Materia you have, the lower your strength gets physically, but the higher and your HP, but the more magic and max MP you get. Honestly, late game, sometimes if I'm doing some magic damage, it's probably through summons where I don't have to lose a, suffer a strength penalty, but they have a greater penalty for your HP and MP if you do that. Yeah, with let's say summons have the worst penalties. Yeah. Like, overall. Command, mid command support, and... Uh, command, support... What's the fucking third one I'm thinking Independent. Of? Independent, thank you. Yeah. Those materials usually don't have benefit drawbacks. Usually, some of, the, uh, some of the independent materia do, though. No, some of the support materia do. The independent is the blue one, right? Yes. Yeah, supports the, supports the purple stuff. The purple material sometimes does and doesn't have the drawbacks to them, but I find they're well worth the uh, investment, in my opinion. Unfortunately, they t they're just as bad to master, so it's like I don't particularly can customize my roles. I like to think of it this way uh, when it comes to, like, materia management and, like, who you should give what and all that sort of thing. So some some characters just stat-wise are inherently just better at certain things than other characters. Vincent and Aerith are going to be your ma magicians. You're basically your, your big magic users. And Ooh. in a way, you know, black mages, white mages, red mages in the Final Fantasy series always had a reputation of being really strong but really squishy. Yeah. And in a way, overloading a character with materia makes them really magically adept. But yeah, but the squishy. thing is, though, is that Tifa is one of those people who should not be using magic no, for base no. stat purposes. Which is fine, because I think out of all the stat distribution, this is all just, just off the top of my head, because I, I got to look into this later. Tifa was one I always felt they got a little wrong, because she's supposed to be the monk of the group. Yeah. And she's supposed to be physically strong. But as of now, Cloud is our best character stat-wise and will be for the remainder of the game. Yeah, the Cloud's only, strong, Cloud's only uh, weakness is dexterity, so he's a little sluggish. That and his limit breaks take much longer than other characters. Mm -hmm. To be more, to go more depth into that, the limit break system works by means of how you learn it. Is first you spam the limit break, the to get your uh, limit level Bs, and then your second limit break is you got to kill a set amount of enemies. Barrett, for example, could take anywhere between like 100 to 120 to his B from his B from his 1B to 2A. Cloud could take over 200. But yeah. that's mainly because he never leaves the fucking party. He never leaves the party, and he does have some of the best. You, you mean he yeah. can't leave the party? We can't. No. You can't, no. Kyle he, cannot leave the party. He's main character. Yeah, absolutely. I, I usually buy a fire material, stick it on Tifa, and leave Cloud's ice and lightning alone. It is really weird, though, like going from seven to from four to and six, because seven only lets you use three characters. 
you know, as opposed to four, which had five, and six, which had four. Seven, and five had four. Yeah, and five had four. That's right. Uh, seven knocks it down to three, and Cloud is permanent. Like, you cannot switch him out. So you can only switch between two characters for a majority of the game. And I'm kind of on and off with that because I like Cloud as a character, and it's like, whatever. But it's also like, I think it wouldn't have killed them if they added one more character to the party comp. Depends. Uh, the game is balanced enough so that three in mind is the the ideal thing. So yeah, I'm obviously not it's, any the, sleep. it's designed around it. Obviously, right. The only thing I admittedly wish I could. The only reason why I think I would even like to have more than three is solely because of the um, solely so I can like limit farm a yeah. lot quicker. By the way, if you are going for a complete inventory run, this is the only place in the game that sells iron bangles. Right. I have no idea why. <laughs> because there's so, because a lot of late game areas are going to be like, hey, you know what? They, you know, the players aren't going to want their cheap armor. Bangles anymore. Seriously. There's no crafting system in this game. Fun fact with this guy. You can run through all the tutorials with him. The more your tutorials you do, the more fidgety the other members get. <laughs> it's like you'll literally see the other ones like, shi like shaking or something like that at some point. Yeah. So this is the, the beginner's hall. Earlier in the playthrough, uh, before you head out, Tifa says the guy in the weapon store wants to tell you something. This is pretty much the place. They, they're, they're directing you towards the beginner's hall because here you can get a free all materia. Which you're going to want for your cure magics. Yes, curative magics and uh, or defensive magics, which I'm going to be using for now because uh, early game, they give you a lot of potions and cure does uh, uh, heal a lot. And most of the time, you don't have to heal everybody at once often. Uh, potions are more than enough at the time. So for this playthrough, uh, early on this playthrough, I have all equipped with lightning. Because right. the majority of our enemies are still mechanical. You're right. And uh, they are weak to lightning, so it's, it's whatever at this point. Okay, so we got to, can we talk about the save point for a second? Yeah. Uh, is it a C? Is it stand for checkpoint? That's supposed to be a C for checkpoint. I also took it as the memory card slot thing. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm imagining it. That's what I'm imagining it's supposed to be. Yeah. Hey, you talk to the talk to these little children here. Pretty much demonstrating how limit breaks work. Pretty, uh, limit breaks in this game, what I believe is the first game that introduced limit breaks. I think it was technically six. Six had desperation attacks, but which not, I would count. Not, I would honestly count six desperation attacks as the introduction of limit breaks, but seven is one that made them more obvious. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because honestly, I I have had like at least maybe four playthroughs of six so far. I don't think I've ever triggered one of those. Yeah, well, the conditions are also different, too, because desperation attacks were just that, desperation. You can only activate them when you're fatal. Right. Limit breaks in Final Fantasy VII activate after you take enough damage. Uh, basically, you have a limit break gauge. After taking enough damage, your limit break will fill up. Once it's maxed out, you can do a super attack, which gets priority over everything. Yeah. Right. Like, as soon as you use it, that is the next thing that's happening, and you can use that to your advantage for certain fights if you know how to, uh, if you know how everything works out. I'll be demonstrating that later down the road. Why'd you sleep in the bed? Uh, because, I, I don't know, because the, the, the kid offered, and I was like, I'm tired. <laughs> well, why, well, why'd you leave the keys up on the table? Why'd I leave the keys on the table? I, di I didn't. <laughs> 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 So anyways, I was saying earlier, sometimes uh, the pre-rendered backgrounds, it may look very confusing on where you can enter exit. This game does actually have a feature. If you hit the select button, well, I'm not sure on PS4. I think it might be the touchpad. Probably. Uh, you will get a cursor that floats above Cloud's head, and you'll also see entry points and exit points. Believe it or not, this was something that I believe was added in the international version of 7. Yes. That wasn't in the Japanese version. The original There's a lot Japanese of things that weren't in the Japanese version. The other thing is being Materia Exchange, which I fucking love. <laughs> Wait, the material exchange wasn't in the Japanese version. No, like what the happened is Japanese version. the material exchange, right? So basically, right. that's what it made one of the Yuffie side quests a pain in the ass. Once you put your material back in everywhere, you had to go through everybody's thing and make oh, sure it all went around God. correctly. Yeah. So seven just allowed you to exchange materials between your characters on a whim from their from their current setups to go over, which makes it so much more convenient for me when I have to like change my party members over, but I want to keep the material set up the same. Good God, I actually have the original. Uh, Japanese release, so version 1.0 of 7, which I, will, I always found fascinating. Like at one point, I want to do a playthrough of that because I, I don't know. I know it's like an inferior version of the game because it doesn't have the weapons. It doesn't have ruby or emerald. Uh, you don't fight diamond weapon at all in that version of the game. It's also not in English. It's also not. That's not a problem with me. You know. Uh, no, I know. I one know. of the first. Uh, to go more into the uh, the background of that, one of the first Japanese games I ever bought was a Japanese copy of Six. Yeah. And I love Six so much that I was able to play it beating just fine. I had a little. Uh, obviously, I had a bit of trouble with like inventory and all that because I remember what to what at some points. Like, don't you have a personal goal of getting like every Japanese, Japanese copy of Final Fantasy? Yeah. Yes, I'm almost done actually. Like, which ones are you missing? I'm missing thirteen. Uh, missing ten. I'm missing yeah everything ten and beyond. Basically. Okay. Personally, I have the Persona. I have Eternal Punishments PS Japanese PSP version, 
but I love that game script so much that I can't adjust to the ang I can't adjust to playing pure Japanese like that. I can't. I need. I want the English. Look at here, so. Barrett here like 20 years early over the y'all hear something meme. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> also, his elbow just dislocated from his hand there. Yeah. <laughs> then he hit him with a gun arm. <laughs> That's you know, hurt. That's like that's, that's with the highest with the higher resolution here. All your all your uh, in game models look like Terrence and Phillip characters. <laughs> Shinra's in Canada. Oh, God. <laughs> no, because no, because if this were the case, then Sherman would be paying their uh, employees much better, and they'd have health benefits. Uh, so anyway, uh, after ev after everything that happens in uh, Seventh Heaven, that's the name of the bar that Tifa runs. The show? No, no, no. Seventh, seventh Heaven, the name of the bar. Uh, you are allowed to. You, you get free reign to explore the rest of that sector. It's not very big at all. There's only and there's nothing else to do. There's only the weapon shop and the beginners hall. And the and weapon the shop, shop, I bought uh, iron bangles for everyone because it is just a better upgrade than the bronze bangles we were wearing earlier. And you get one in the slot. Uh, I also went on my way to buy some grenades because, believe it or not, grenades are like the most powerful weapon to use early on in Midgar because yeah. they do the most consistent damage and they ignore physical defense. Got a little pineapple. We shouldn't worry about it so much now, but one thing I swear Final Fantasy VII is the Notorious for and some other. It, well, I know actually I'm going to say Seven is notorious for. Seven is one of those games where the armor has a lot of hidden bonuses to them that we aren't going to be able to fully see that offhand. For example, some of them will really up the strength by 30 on a given material on a given weapon or armor that we don't see. Some of the, in case also in the original Seven release, the magic defense system or the magic evasion stat totally broken, didn't work. Well, that, well that, that's the, nothing new for Square at this point in time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I can I can appreciate six, but that game's co the, the original six's coding was pretty much held together by spit and hope. Yeah. Meanwhile, this game, however, they had the broken magic defense that I think it's fixed for the uh, re-releases. So uh, was it something for the original Japanese release or yeah, the American the release? I think the American release and the Japanese release didn't have a working magic defense. Stat. Okay, so it might be something re-release. There are certain things that don't work inherently. We can get more into those as we play along, or something that I can just remember off the top of my head because I don't know. I love this game. I am not a compendium of this game, so if there are little details and Easter eggs that I'm, I'm missing out on, I do apologize. But I don't know everything about this game. Same here. So see, see I'm, we're in this train sequence right now, and like something's going on, and then like I'm. I'm automatically thinking of the bouncer right now when they're trying to look for that card. Yeah. I found it. <laughs> Cut the chatter. Cut the chatter. <laughs> That's right. You're looking at the PA system. He's like, I thought he was talking to the PA system when he said that, too. And I was like, what the hell are you talking to, Sion? He's like, Cut the chatter. Cut the chatter. Hey, fuck you, Sion. He's like, are know. you out here conducting this trade? I don't think so, well, motherfucker. The reason, all right, so what's going on here is that because we're an eco terrorist group and because we blew up a Mako reactor, Shinra has up security big time. So originally, the way how the, the way how the trains work is that after uh, every every once in a while, after a few stops, they run an ID system on the train to identify everyone that's on the train to make sure there's no stowaways or anything like that because everybody's like faces and IDs are in this like central database inside right. Midgar. But after the, the Mako reactor explosion, they upped security big time, and as a result, uh, Avalanche can't use fake IDs anymore. That's how they got past the trains in the first place. And now they're kind of put on the spot. It's like, okay, uh, they're going to find out that we're here. we got to jump ship or oh. jump train. Okay, so got your ID. Your name is Hugh Ferret? Jazz. Yeah. <laughs> your name's pretty – that's a pretty weird name, uh, but okay. Uh -huh. Right this way, Mr. Zach Fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Your and it says here your name is. <laughs> okay, it says your name. So it, it says your name is Eris. Is that right? It's a typo. It, it was Eris. I gotta say, Mister Sephiroth, you look a lot blacker than normal. <laughs> what happened to your arm? Lost in an accident, fool. Carry on, sir. Huh? Your name says you're Jesse. So that uh, yeah, sounds about right. So because of the uh, because of the the up security, we got to jump ship. We got we got to gather this train before they find out that we're here. So we're gonna just jump out of the damn train. Tuck and roll. <laughs> Tuck and roll. <laughs> Cloud Thief and Barry go jump out of the train. Meanwhile, Jesse, uh, Biggs, and Wedge are gonna stay on board. They're wearing disguises. That's them on the left over there. Yeah, uh, Wedge is in the back in the train though. With yeah, Barry he'll he'll get up into the front eventually. But that's eventually. that's uh, that's Biggs in the uh, the trench coat and the top hat, and that's Jesse wearing the Shinra uniform. Godspeed, you three. We're yeah. never going to see you again. For, we're not going to see you again <laughs> until later on. I like how Wes just kind of looks like a child. He does. <laughs> child at heart. A fashion bitch. Or at least a coward. Who he, he labels himself as a coward. So the thing about the chain sequence, 
uh, is that you have a time limit to get from one end of the car to the other. Now, if you fail the time limit, it's not a game over. It just means you have to jump the train earlier than usual. And uh, if you, j one of the things that I used to like doing actually and playing this game growing up is that I would deliberately fail the sequence so that I was at the very end of this tunnel. Because if you try and go backwards, you run into a security checkpoint. Right. And you... Uh, They'll fight these guys called special combatants. Yeah, basically, basically you fight them a little the earlier than usual. And they, they are infinite. They keep spawning over and over again. And to me, hey, free experience points. Yeah, that's that's, that's experience you know, That's back when I, I, I overcompensated big time by grinding everywhere in this game. Right. Uh, but it's also like, yeah, I don't really need to do that. So for this playthrough, I decided, you know, let's just do the train sequence normally and get here. Because uh, also, like, <laughs> jumping out of the train as early as possible and going through this sequence actually takes a bit because you go a long way. Yeah, you do. Which is wild because I kind of didn't realize what it was supposed to be. Like, I thought the train was going this way. It turns out the train's <laughs> going that, that way. way. Yeah. There's also one thing I always had a thing about with Final Fantasy when it came to, like, all the characters going into, like, the main character so that it, like all, the, it, it simulates that they're all running together. Yeah. I just made it, I just made, I, for me, my mind makes it look like that they're just merging together. Yeah. But they all just take the form of the main character. It is a main. So, in the case of Tifa and Barrett going inside Cloud, you get them, you get the fusion, but it's still just Cloud. It's a main, it's a holdover from, like, Classic, classic Final Fantasy and eight, I think was the first. To eight was the face first to avert it, but yeah. I think come to think of it, it's the only one that does that. Yeah, unless you're playing twelve in the open world, or fifteen. Fifteen, yeah. Fifteen didn't do it, yeah. And thirteen, but yeah, I think eight Thir was no the thirteen. Does it? Does it? Thirteen, I believe, does it. Yes, yeah. thirteen is the case where yeah, I believe they're all still in one character as representing the entire party. Which I still think is ultimately better than Shin Megami Tensei's. Hey, you're a spinning ice cream coin. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this place may look imposing. There's actually only two ways you can go here, and they both lead to the same area. So it's pretty much it's whatever you want to do at this point. Anyway, so we got new enemies here. We got like, these rocket launchers. Uh, see, guess what they do? You know what? Uh, you know it's also another weird thing that I found going from like Final Fantasy IV or VI into this game. You don't see the enemies in the uh, interface without having to hit the help button. You what have you to mean? actively hit the help button to get the enemy names. Oh. You know, because on, on the left here, we have cl we have character names. We have the barrier thing, which is... is we'll, uh, we'll deal with that later. Yeah, it's physical and magical defense. We'll get to that later. Then you have the act the ATB, which is back. Limp HP meters and limp are in the MP. No room for enemy names <laughs> <laughs> at all. <laughs> so you have to hit the help button in order to get the names. And as a result, I don't know half of these enemies off the top of my head. I never remember. I never commit some of these fodder to name to my memory. Not, yeah. not unless Especially you like because some of them seem like they got a direct translation from their Japanese name. So good luck with me pronouncing half like, of that shit. You got like two options. You can either A, hit the help button, or B, get a strategy guide, or subscribe to PlayStation Magazine. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> strategy guide, holy shit, yeah. Um, so growing up, I had the... I think it was the Prima Vista. Was it not the Prima Vista? Um, Brady Prima, Games. Was it Brady Games? There was, guide? There was Prima Vista and Brady Games. Those were the main ones. Okay. But well, the I, more well known. The ones. more well known, or the more widely available. Yes. I should say. I had a Brady Games guide for eight, which helped me find all the rare cards I missed out on my playthrough, which made yeah. more sense to me. I was like, okay, I guess I really should have been doing I actually, card anymore. Recently, I got a Brady Games one for uh, Final Fantasy twelve. Really? Yeah, at Probably a like goodwill. One of the last Brady Games guides ever made for a Final like, Fantasy. At a goodwill, nonetheless. Oh, well, that, that, that's not surprising. I actually, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I did buy a strategy guide for uh, 12 Zodiac to see what changed in it, and there was quite a few changes in it that made the guide a worthwhile purchase, in my opinion. The thing about strategy guides is, like, I love, I, like, I know I could go on the internet for walkthroughs and shit. But I, I like strategy guides a lot because, like, you, you can, get the pictures and you, get, you get the pictures of it. They're more in depth and they just look nice, yeah. you know? Depending on the game, of course, I might actually try. I might actually go the distance for our lightning returns guide because if I'm going to go through that, I, I kinda, have I, because the facts, in my opinion, from what I've read, do not help me at all. I need the visual cues for that game in particular. I think I gave you the 13-2 guide. Yeah, which I don't need. I already 100% of that way beforehand. Which I'll admit, I actually did enjoy my time with 13-2, Caius notwithstanding. <laughs> See you guys next time for more Final Fantasy VII. <laughs>